Greetings, everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about apples, which is, I know, apples. We all know about apples, but there is a story to this, okay? I am currently under lockdown, okay? I am in quarantine because of the coronavirus. I'm filming this in March of 2020. What's interesting right now is that you can't go to grocery stores right now without a whole hell of a headache. There's lines outside everywhere. A lot of the small businesses have, sh have shut down. However, one thing that has stayed open are farmers markets, at least here in New York. And I know in California, they're staying open as well because that is uh, an essential business. That is something that people need. So farmers markets are still going strong. Any kind of essential worker right now is kind of putting their neck on the line to go out in public and be you know, communicating and dealing with so many people. These are apples that I got from uh, a vendor, uh, Maynard Farms, which I believe is in upstate New York. Right now people really need food. They need to go out and get the groceries and stuff like that. And it's very difficult to do that. So the fact that people are going out to farmer's markets and selling their wares is, um, that's a beautiful thing. So thank you guys. And um, yeah, so this is maybe not the most exotic of all the things that I've had. However, keep in mind, apples have a lot of varieties, like a lot, a lot, like thousands of them. So one of the things I would like to do with this channel is try some of the antique apples that are out there, ones that are very difficult to find or ones that have been around for a really long time and maybe have a story to it. The first one is the Jonathan apple. Now the Jonathan apple is a very pretty apple. It's got a nice shine to it. It's nice and smooth. I'm gonna read what uh, Maynard Farms wrote about this Jonathan apple. Um, this is from the 1790s and from Woodstock, New York. It is a parent apple to many classics, including the Ida Red and the Jonna Gold. It is crisp, juicy, spicy, sharp, tang with lemon notes. It breaks down when cooked, it's good for making muffins, and it keeps cakes moist. It is a brilliant addition to pies. Hmm. It's got a nice fresh taste to it. You can tell that they picked this fairly recently. It's really crisp and juicy and refreshing tasting. The sweetness on this is, uh, it's normal. It's like a five, maybe. And um, it is tart though, not like super tart, but maybe like a four out of 10, like not quite as much as an orange, but like kind of getting there. Yeah, that is, that is really good. It's a nice refreshing apple. I would gladly pick one of those up and just like, eat it out of hand. This one here is, I, I believe the Stamen Wine Sap, which is a very interesting looking apple. It's probably the most unique out of the four that I have. It's got a little bit of a roughness to it, but the most notable thing is it's a very dark color. It actually looks like there's some brown spots on it. It looks like it's like maybe like a little bit bad, but when I push on those spots, it actually doesn't give at all. So I think that is just part of the coloring. It's from 1866 from Leavenworth, Kansas. It was discovered in an orchard of wine saps Crisp and juicy, singular deep flavor of the essence of pure apple. Ooh. It adds sparkle to pies. It holds shape when cooked. Uh, this is a little bit tart. Oh, this apple tastes like it knows things. It tastes like it's been around. Like it's, it's got a very mature kind of flavor to it. The sweetness on this one is a little bit more than your standard like Macintosh apple. I'd say this is more like a, like a six, maybe a seven. There's a little bit of tartness, but really not a lot. I'd say like a one out of ten. That is a very unique flavor. It tastes a little bit like mulled wine. It's got like a like a spice to it and like a kind of like a mature flavor. It doesn't really taste like fermented, but it tastes like like there's like a little bit of depth to it. It doesn't like 
grape juice and wine. Like there's depth to wine. There isn't really so much to grape juice. It's the same same with this apple. It doesn't taste like your typical apple. It's got like notes of being more like apple cider than apple juice. There's there's something to it that is not in your typical apple. That is really good. That is really tasty. The texture on this one, it's um, it's crisp, but it's like the particles in it are like a little bit bigger. This one is the Gold Rush Apple. It's got a nice gold color to it. A little bit of a blush to it as well. So it's not just like a pure yellow apple or anything. And uh, it's very rough. It's got a lot of little, uh, whatever you want to call it, it's on it, little specks. What's the name for that? I, I don't know what those are called. And uh, this one, it says it's from 1993. Fairly recent one. It was developed at Purdue from the Golden Delicious and from antiques such as the Melrose, Rome, and Siberian Crab Apple. It is crisp, crunchy, deeply flavored. It opens with a burst and finishes with honey. Simply delicious. So that's interesting. This is like a little bit of a mad scientist apple. This is a, a nice hybrid between some antique varieties and uh, the Golden Delicious. So that should be uh, an interesting one to try to see how it compares to a Golden Delicious. Hmm. Sour. Let's get that out of the way, I guess. On a level of 1 to 10, where 10 is lemon, this is like a, like a 7. Much more than a normal apple. It has a decent sweetness to it. Maybe a 6? more than your standard like supermarket Macintosh apple but um, yeah that's that's actually quite quite tasty to detect some flavor notes on it but it's a little harder because it, that sharpness that um, that sourness is kind of hits you first like a sweet sour pear some honey on it it's good this one, I believe, is the most rare out of the bunch. This is hard to say. <laughs> Esopus Spitzenberg. This is from the 1700s from Ulster City, New York. It was found on a tree near Maynard Farms that provided this apple. Uh, it's crisp, deeply flavored with rich notes of orange and burnt sugar. A superior apple for eating and cooking. It holds its shape well. It's mentioned in Melville's Bartleby the Scrivener and a favorite of Thomas Jefferson. It is an antique apple that is rare in New York City markets. Cool! Hmm. The texture on that is a bit softer. Not in a way that it's like mushy or anything, but it doesn't like snap, you know, with crispness. It's got more of a, um, it yields a little bit more when you chew it. It's maybe a five for sweetness. It's on par with like a, like a Macintosh apple. It's got a little bite to it. There's some tartness in there. It's more than you would expect. I would say maybe a four out of 10. That is um, a nice flavor. It's not, there's not like anything really weird about it though. This tastes like an apple, but it's like a very good apple, like a nice concentrated apple flavor. You know, I tend to like things that have uh, a lot of odd, odd flavors to it, but you know, at the end of the day, like if you want something that is just like a really good quality tasting apple, that, that's what that tastes like. That's like nothing too crazy or anything, but it is really solid. That's a, that's a nice flavor. All four of these are really good. They all have little unique flavors in them that make them very distinct from each other. And I think really it depends what kind of apple you like. And I think on any given day I may want one of these over the other. But uh, as for right now, <laughs> I would say in fourth place I'm going to go with Jonathan. The Jonathan Apple is totally good. I really love the texture on it. It's very crisp. It's uh, very satisfying to eat. Next I'd go with the Gold Rush. This one 
it's really good. It's very sour though, so you'd have to like a, like a sour apple to like this one. Um, I like sour fruit. I, I'd be happy happily eat like a Granny Smith apple. So for me, this one is um, totally great. In second place, we have the I'm going to read it off my phone. Esopus Spitzenberg. I mean, mostly it gets second place because of that name. But also, the flavor is really good. It's, it's nothing like too crazy, like I said. This is just like a very good apple taste. And first place goes to the Stamen Wine Sap. It looks cool. It's got all these like weird spots on it. It's like a dark color. It's got a little roughness to it. And it's got a, the name's kind of cool too, but more than anything, that flavor is very unique. It's not what you'd maybe want to go for if you want your traditional apple flavor, but the flavor that it does have is, uh, is very special. The mulled spice flavor, the cider taste, the sweetness to it, the slightly wine kind of taste that this has, it's... It's really good. Like, I'd say that this one, you know, when I ate it, I was kind of like, whoa, like, this is something special. There are so many different apple varieties out there that I could literally do an episode like this, reviewing four different apples side by side, and probably get as much of a variety as I have here in as far as flavor and texture and like all of that. And I could do that, like, every single day for years and I'm not gonna run out of apples. I could be the weird apple explorer if you'd like. I think I'd probably get tired of that, so I'm not going to do that. However, if you would like to see more videos like this where I compare apple varieties or other more typical fruits, do let me know, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I wanna give a special shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on patreon.com. Patreon is how this channel happens, is how I can afford to do all the things that I do. So if you wanna help me out by supporting the channel and getting some bonuses along the way, check out the description. I also have these shirts for sale. Those are in the description as well. See you next time, bye.